Computer controlled CB, how I did it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, what we've got here is a TTI TCB 550. Now, a couple of days ago I did a short on how I'd got this thing computer controlled. Basically, it's being controlled using the standard wiring into the microphone socket. So transmit receives done in there, so. However, the computer side of things does require a circuit and I built a circuit, I'm just trying to find the piece of paper the circuit isn't my design the circuit is circuits are of a design by Peter EI4JR or G4KQU I'm not sure if, not sure if he's silent key now because his website's been down a long time this, I got this information a long time ago, so, but I have kept hold of it and I do have it stored on, on my computer. So, there's two versions of the PC to mobile rig style interface, one with opto isolators and, trans and isolation transformers and one without, but I have uh, ground loop isolators that can fill in the, that void anyway. So, I just use a simple circuit, which is this circuit here, if I'll bring that into camera. So, it connects to the COM port, a proper COM port, not COM port, not, um, uh, not one of those uh, prolific adapters. Although I think the, the um, uh, converter I'm using might have a prolific chip in it, I'm not sure. I'd have to look at that. But it works fine. It basically connects to pin 7 on a on a 9 pin serial port and pin 5 is the ground on a 9 pin a serial port connector so so I've built that circuit years ago I'm going to zoom out now and I'm going to just unclip the camera so I can actually show you this because it'd be easy for me to just unclip the camera from the tripod so circuit is down here I'm just being very careful not to knock my microphone out. So, that's the circuit in there. I'm just going to focus on that. That's what I've built. It's in this old laundry detergent box, which is very degraded now. So it's been exposed to sunlight and whatever. So there you go, there's the circuit there. The transistor's probably a bit overkill for this. And the electrolytic capacitor, although it calls for a polarised one, is unpolarized because that's all I had at that value at the time. There's a little LED on the top that shows when it's transmitting or not. So we follow that round down to the floor. So down here we've got the interface connected to this USB to serial converter, which I believe I got that from Maplin. So lots of Maplin stuff here. So it's connected to also with an ethernet cable which runs up to here it's not an actual ethernet cable anymore because it's an off cut you wouldn't want to plug this into an ethernet port it's connected to this little adapter which i cobbled together which has a relay on it an omron relay which i scavenged out of an uninterruptible power supply which then in turn it's powered from the cb same power supply the other side of this is a gray wire here which goes up to the cb simple so I'm just going to pause the video while I put the camera back on the tripod. Okay, so we resume the video at the computer. So I'm just going to grab a keyboard because this is a wireless keyboard that I'm using on this computer. There is a keyboard on the desk, but it's not plugged into this because there would be nowhere for me to plug it in with the wireless keyboard and mouse because all I've got spare mouse-wise is the wireless mouse that goes with this keyboard. So. If I haven't left that for too long, that shouldn't ask me for the root password. And the reason why I have to run this command as root is because if I try accessing the USB to serial converter using my normal user account on here, it will not allow me to do that. And I didn't need the password because it already saw that I was, was the root to use it. I'd already logged in as root. Or in this case, just super user but not actually fully super user, if you know what I mean. I'll explain that properly in a while. So, a preset I've saved is USB 0 because the device name 
going to here, instead of TTY S0, it would be USB0. Don't worry about speed or anything because all we're doing is we're changing the state of the RTS pin on the serial port. And that is now in transmit. And I can show you that. The radio is on channel 20. If I bring in another radio, which is this one, we'll focus on that. You can see we're getting a full set of bars there. So I'm going to now have to juggle this a bit. So I'm now going to close off this window. Yes, no longer transmitting. So the interface came about when I was running a PMR446 gateway for something called the Free Radio Network a very long time ago before I actually got my amateur radio license. And I wanted to do a CB version of that as well because the address I was at at the time had a loft space that I could access to put an antenna into. The antenna being the Excalibur very short CB antenna. The SWR was absolutely atrocious so I had to use a matcher which I do still have to this day, a Euro CB EM110. So, <laughs> and I obviously had to run two computers to run both of these um, gateways basically. The radio for the 446 gateway was an Intec DRS5070 which is a base station version of the MT5050. Uh, I believe that's got some issues with its final output transistor so I'm going to have to look into that. So that's as far as I've got with this manually controlling it. Now I would like to A automatically control this and B do it from a Raspberry Pi because that would be a little bit better than running an old laptop because this thing will still plug into a Raspberry Pi although that does have its own uh, COM port on it. I don't believe that has a RTS pin on there so it would probably have to be done using one of these things. So it would be a Raspberry Pi most likely inside a metal box and I might transfer that interface to a metal box as well because that might shield it a bit. So it will also transmit audio. So if I start the transmitter again, I'm just going to have to make sure I do this right. So if I start the transmitter again, there we go. I'll bring the whoop, buzzy buzz 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 mains home. Don't like it very much. Bring the radio that's receiving across, and I go to this and I press play. This is a test transmission, testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Then I go back to the other window and turn off the transmitter. So, yeah, I can put audio across it, and how I'm doing that is a USB sound dongle, I believe it's based on a C media chip. That came with the microphone that I use in the living room studio for recording things. But it isn't enough power output to drive that microphone. It requires proper phantom power, not the 5 volts that that thing spits out. So that's connected to through the audio side of the interface using a ground loop isolator just to try and reduce some reduce noise because everything does seem to have a common ground so getting rid of ground loops is probably a good idea. So that's pretty much how that's done. I can show you the connections again. So I've got to zoom out first before I do this. My desk's a bit cluttered due to ongoing projects and finding places for things to go. So I'll show you things again. So that's the sound card there with a adapter which is necessary to take the ground loop isolator which I think you can just say see behind there. That came from Maplin. A lot of stuff came from Maplin and the other end of that's connected down there to an adapter that I built, very crude adapter that I built down there which the interface is then plugged into. So that's pretty much it. We've got CB radio here. I've always used this one for experiments because this was originally going to be the CB gateway radio but that obviously never happened. Two reasons, SWR and a lot of noise. So, it works. 
I've got manual control, I just need to figure out how to get automatic control and there'll be a video following up on that later on. So, also, I'm over the 1,000 subscribers as I film this and there will be a live stream forthcoming at some point, hopefully the next couple of days when I can find time to do it. So, as I said, I would do a live stream when I hit 1,000 subscribers and I do plan to do that very soon. So, 7-3 for now and I'll catch you in the next video and hopefully I'll make some progress behind the scenes with this and then I'll show you how that was done. So, 7-3 for now.